Today, the topic of our lecture is on the alcoholic liver disease. So as we all know that on chronic consumption of alcohol, it leads to liver disease, right? So today we are going to discuss about that, about the different stages of the liver disease, which occurs on chronic and excessive consumption of alcohol. What are the clinical features, investigations, and the treatment? So first thing you should know that just a single consumption of alcohol a single episode of consumption of alcohol is not going to lead to liver disease. If it is a chronic consumption of alcohol and excessive consumption of alcohol more than the threshold, then only it is going to cause this liver disease. Chronic and excessive means if there is an intake of more than 60 to 80 grams of alcohol per day, this I'm talking in men, okay? Men and women, the values are different. So uh, uh, per day, uh, for around 10 years in men okay and in women it is 20 more than it is more than 20 to 40 grams per day for 10 years if it exceeds this this levels you know then it is uh, then the, there will be the development of liver disease okay so liver disease now what how what are the stages of development of liver disease so initially the patient will have alcoholic fatty liver in the first stage in the development of this alcoholic liver disease is the fatty liver, which is also called as alcoholic steatosis. So I'll just show you a picture of a fatty liver. What exactly happens in fatty liver? Yes, you can see this. Uh, so here is a healthy liver. Okay, so and here is the steatosis of fatty liver. You can see the deposition of fat in the liver. Okay, so here I'll show you another picture of this. Yes, you can see the stages of liver damage due to alcoholism. So here is your uh, healthy liver. Okay, so then on consumption of alcohol, slowly there is the deposition of fat in liver. So this deposition of fat initially it starts in the perivenular hepatocytes, but slowly, slowly the entire lobule starts getting affected. Okay, and then there starts the development of inflammation in the fatty liver. Initially, the initial stages of fatty liver are usually asymptomatic. Okay, so but slowly there will be the development of inflammation in the fatty fatty liver, and there will be the development of fibrosis. Okay, so there will be the development of fibrosis. After that, then slowly there will be the development of hepatitis. Okay, so these are the stages of the fatty liver. Sorry, the stages of alcoholic liver disease. First, initially the deposition of fat. The stage is usually asymptomatic. And then there is inflammation in the fatty liver, which causes fibrosis. And slowly, slowly, what is going to happen is that there will be the development of hepatitis. Okay, and this stage, this chronic hepatitis, this hepatitis stage, usually the patient starts developing all sorts of symptoms. Okay, if the patient stops consuming alcohol at this stage, suppose the patient is diagnosed of fatty liver and the patient stops consuming alcohol at this stage, then all these pathological changes can be, then all the pathological changes, again, it can come back to normal. There can be normalization of the pathological changes. Okay, so it can go back to this normal stage. Right. So even after this stage, also, if the patient doesn't stop consuming alcohol, then gradually there will be the progression to hepatitis. Clear. So these are the stages of your uh, liver disease. Okay. So one by one, let me tell you first, as I told you about this fatty liver, remember this stage in this fatty liver, this stage is usually asymptomatic. Okay, so there is hepatomegaly because of this increase in the size of the livers. There are some patients may experience, you know, some discomfort in this right upper quadrant. And there are certain patients, there can also uh, be this liver, you know, there can be tender hepatomegaly. And at this stage, if you carry out the different um, tests like the LFT, the basic test, liver function test, you will find that there is modest elevations in the AST. Yes, in the levels of AST, ALT levels. Okay, so there will be elevations in the AST, ALT levels. Okay, so there'll be elevations in the GTP levels. Okay, there'll be elevation in the bilirubin levels. So at this stage, there will be a modest elevation in the levels of the liver enzymes. 
okay and what other uh, elevations can you see at this stage at this stage you will also find the elevations of the triglycerides okay cholesterol so if you find out if you measure these levels in the serum the levels of triglyceride cholesterol and serum there will also be elevation of triglycerides and cholesterol levels in the serum okay and what is the confirmatory test how will you confirm that yes this patient has developed fatty liver usually ultrasonography okay so ultrasonography test which is done to ultrasonography is the confirmatory test which is done to uh, confirm fatty liver okay so uh, first as i told you about this first stage there is alcoholic steatosis as we were discussing just now that this stage is usually asymptomatic there is elevation in the levels of the different enzymes as well as in bilirubin levels also there will be elevation okay there will be elevation in the serum triglycerides in the serum cholesterol okay when you do the ultrasonography it is going to show fatty liver okay and um, at this stage if you stop alcohol if the patient stops alcohol then these pathological changes will again come back to normal so this is the first stage the second stage is as you saw just now that is alcohol what we say it as alcoholic steatohepatitis alcoholic l okay it is alcoholic steatohepatitis hepatitis means there is this uh, along with this fatty changes in the liver there will also be evidence of inflammation okay so there, at this stage there there will be the development of fibrosis if you carry out uh, you know a biopsy at this stage you'll find fibrotic changes fibrosis okay if the patient still doesn't uh, stop consuming alcohol then gradually the next stage is your alcoholic hepatitis so in this stage of alcoholic hepatitis you will start getting all the clinical features like there will be the onset of jaundice okay so plus there will be abdominal discomfort and you know and all the other features like hepatomegaly plus the other features of Uh, the liver disease also like uh, i already as i have discussed in the previous lectures what are the features of liver disease when there is you know gradually when there is liver cell dysfunction and there is um, uh, you know the liver cell uh, disease the uh, hepatitis develops and uh, cirrhosis develops so you get various features of liver cell disease do you remember a few like you have got the spider angioma or spider nevus or nevi what is spider nevi It was all discussed that uh, you know spider nevi. It uh, there is a, a dilation of the blood vessels. Okay, so like what happens is blood vessels they get dilated. How how does it look like? Like it looks like a central dilated blood vessels, and they are this radiating blood vessels. It just looks like a spider web. Okay, so this is mainly found in the you know head and neck region. Okay, so spider nevi. This is one of the feature of uh, liver cell failure, liver cell or chronic liver cell disease. and palmar erythema okay there is redness of the palms okay palmar erythema okay, so there is redness of the palms and what else gynecomastia okay so like this there are many other features of chronic liver disease you will find many features of a uh, chronic liver disease in this patient and um, if it goes to more severe stages like severe liver cell uh, dysfunction will severe liver cell failure the patient will develop portal hypertension accordingly you will find all the features of portal hypertension portal hypertension also i have discussed details in the lecture portal hypertension the patient will start developing ascites okay and uh, due to portal hypertension there can also be variceal bleeding the varices you know the esophageal varices the dilated veins they can rupture and they can cause bleeding so these are other features of chronic liver disease okay so then next what we are going to do is that what investigations we are going to do at this stage at this stage when there is a full you know you can find all the features of liver disease obviously you are going to carry out the uh, lft okay the liver function test in that you will see that the ast and the alt they are elevated okay and remember the ast to alt ratio this is more than 2 remember here the ast elevation will be more as compared to the alt elevation okay so the 
AST to ALT elevation, okay, that will be more than two. Okay, here the AST is elevated more than the ALT. This is one of the thing, you know, of the alcoholic liver disease, alcoholic hepatitis. When the hepatitis develops because of this alcohol, alcoholic hepatitis, this is a thing that AST elevation is more than the ALT elevation. Okay, so the bilirubin levels, okay, so they are also raised, okay, so more than three the mg per dl. Okay, there is a mild increase in alkaline phosphatase. Alkaline phosphatase uh, mainly you have a you know, sharp increase in alkaline phosphatase in case of obstructive jaundice, okay, not in these cases, in alcoholic hepatitis, there'll be a mild increase, okay. What about the levels of albumin? Okay, so the levels of albumin will be reduced, reduced albumin. Prothrombin time, prothrombin time is prolonged prothrombin time. The CRP levels are elevated since there is an inflammation, okay, leukocytosis, leukocytosis, Right. And uh, right. So these are the different uh, uh, investigations which you are going to do. And at this stage, if you carry out biopsy, see, these are the, all the tests in the liver enzymes first. OK, then we see the, you know, CBC, we see the CRP, leukocytosis and everything. Then after this, if you carry out biopsy, what are you going to see in the biopsy? Biopsy at the stage of hepatitis, when you see the hepatos, uh, hepatocytes, Okay, at the stage of alcoholic hepatitis, you will find the degeneration of the hepatocytes. Okay, and there is glucocyte infiltration. Since it's the inflammation, inflammation has occurred, there is histological evidence of inflammation at this stage. You will find degeneration of uh, hepatocytes, a degeneration of hepatocytes with the infiltration of leukocytes. So, leukocytic infiltration. Right, okay. So at this stage, still, you know, if you start the treatment, okay, so and if you ask, the, if you tell, advise the patient to stop alcohol, this stage is still reversible, but some, but in fact, a large portion of patients, if still, if they don't control at this stage, or if it has already reached up to this stage, alcoholic hepatitis stage, it often progresses to the next stage of cirrhosis. Cirrhosis, so it progresses to the next stage of cirrhosis. Okay, now what is the prognosis in these patients? Someone asks you, some, a patient has developed alcoholic hepatitis. What do you say? What is the prognosis? See, the prognosis, it depends again upon certain factors. Okay, you have to see certain things. Like you have to see what is this prothrombin time. Okay, you have to see what is his albumin. You have to see his bilirubin levels. You have to see whether there are any features of severe hepatitis. Okay, so because if the patient has developed severe hepatitis, like if the patient has already developed ascites, if the patient has already developed portal hypertension, okay, or if the patient has already developed a renal failure, okay, so then the prognosis is a poor, poor prognosis in severe hepatitis. Okay, so there is high mortality in severe hepatitis. Okay, so now based upon these three things, there is a discrimination function, a score. So if the score is more than 32, it uh, carries poor prognosis. So what is that score? That is what is called as MADRE discrimination, MADRE discrimination function. This MADRE discrimination function is more than 32. Okay, so it carries poor prognosis, right? So let us first see what is the normal prothrombin time. So uh, what is the normal prothrombin time? Yes, the normal prothrombin time, this is around 11 to 13, or you can say 11 to 12.5 seconds. This is the normal, this is the control, okay? So if the prothrombin time is more than five seconds of this normal, like this, if it is, you know, around 16 or 17 or 18, okay? So then that is again a poor prognostic factor. Albumin, if the albumin, comes less than 2.5 grams per dl. Again, it's a poor prognostic factor. If bilirubin is more than 8 mg per dl, then again, it's a poor prognostic factor. So depending upon these uh, things, okay, so we determine uh, the prognosis, right? So prothrombin time, this is your normal prothrombin time. If it is more than five seconds of this normal prothrombin time, okay. What is the normal albumin range, anyone? It is 3.4 to 5.4. Okay, so 3.4 to 5.4 gram per dl. If it becomes less than 2.5, again, it carries a poor prognosis. Yes. So uh, one more thing which I wanted to say, how do you calculate this madre discrimination function? How is this calculated? Remember, there's a formula for this 4.6 
into the patient's prothrombin time. This is your patient's prothrombin time minus this control. So minus the prothrombin time control. Okay. Plus the serum bilirubin. So if this comes out to be more than 32, it carries a poor prognosis. So these are some of the prognostic factors. Clear? Okay, next, uh, what is the treatment? What in, Remember, in alcoholic uh, liver disease, the only treatment is stop alcohol. Okay, stop alcohol, complete, complete stoppage of alcohol. Okay, ask the patient to completely stop alcohol. Obviously, remember chronic alcoholics, or you should not ask them to suddenly stop alcohol. As you know, like if they suddenly stop alcohol, what will happen? They will have all sorts of withdrawal symptoms. Okay. So, according to the protocol, slowly, slowly, they should, uh, you know, taper down the consumption of alcohol. And what else? Uh, prednisolone, yes, severe cases, since there is a lot of inflammation and all. So, since severe cases, you can, prednisolone is given. Okay, so this is usually given for four weeks in severe cases, okay, in cases of severe hepatitis. Then there is one more drug, this pentoxyphylline. Pentoxyphylline is used as controversial, but it can be tried in uh, severe cases. And if there is no other way out, then liver transplantation. So this is the treatment of alcoholic liver disease. Clear? So we have studied about alcoholic liver disease. I told you about the different stages of alcoholic liver disease, the features which develops. Remember, alcoholic fatty liver or steatosis is usually asymptomatic. Okay, so uh, there are there may be a slight symptoms like, you know, uh, discomfort, tender hepatomegaly. But usually, if, the, if it is diagnosed at that stage, alcoholic fatty liver, and the patient stops alcohol, then there can be the complete normalization of the pathological changes. If it is not stopped at that stage, then slowly there will be inflammation in the liver, there will be the development of fibrosis, and then the patient will start developing alcoholic hepatitis. There will be the inflammation and degeneration of the hepatocytes, and the patient will start developing all signs and symptoms of liver disease, liver cell dysfunction. Okay, so at that stage, again, the prognosis depends upon certain prognostic factors, as I just told you, the albumin levels, bilirubin levels, prothrombin time. Okay, so at that stage also, if the prognosis is good, if the hepatitis is not very severe, still, uh, if they stop alcohol, they can go back to normal, but many of them often progress to uh, cirrhosis and if the hepatitis is very severe the mortality is also high okay so this prednisolone pentoxyphylline these can be given in severe stages and if it cannot it's not at all reversible patient has already developed cirrhosis then we go for liver transplantation uh, in many in, uh, in very few selected cases selected cases okay so this is all about your alcoholic liver disease